NASCAR Cup Series race has officially included from Sonoma Raceway, and we see a race with a lot of chaos, a lot of wrecks, and a lot of spins, and a pretty soft field mileage finish where Kyle Larson picks up his third win of 2024. What's going guys, it's Daniel, and welcome back to your video. I just got done watching NASCAR Cup Series race from Sonoma Race with a Toyota Save Mar 350. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go and talk about it. So for the green flag drop in today's race, Chris Buschard would have to start at the rear with a backup car after crashing. So at the start of the race, he had Joe Logano lead the field from the inside with Tyler Reddick on the outside, and Joe Logano got a fantastic start and was able to clear for the race lead. The first cost to race would already come out of lap number two when Denny Hamlin's engine just grenaded down the front straightaway and blew an engine, ending his day. Very rare nowadays, especially in the next gen era, to see engines let go. It seems like JHR has been having a lot of those issues as of late, but Denny Hamlin's day would come to an end and would finish last. And the caution was thrown because of that. Meanwhile, John Remichek got a lot of damage, basically getting into the oil, and he hit the outside wall as well. So then on the restart, you had Joe Logano lead the field from the outside with Ryan Blaney on the inside, and Tyler Reddick got a great run, but Joe Logano, I believe, was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, a lot of chaos started happening. Mark Truex Jr. went off the track after some contact and dropped back to 18th. Will Brown got in the back in there. Then Ross Chastain went wide and lost a ton of positions and lost a ton of ground. Meanwhile, you had William Byron who also had a, started having problems and issues when he felt like he lost a left rear tire and he would come down and the next lap on lap number 14. Then the second a caution race would come out for Ty Gibbs who had a flat right rear tire after hitting the outside wall in turn number 11. His day would come to an end after all the damage ended up taking place and his day would come to a close. So then during this caution, Joe Logano, the race leader, would come down pit road along with A.J. Allmendinger, Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Priest, Zane Smith, Cam Waters all came down pit road while the rest leader stayed out. So then on the restart, you had Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside with Ryan Blaney on the outside, and Tyler Reddick got a great restart and was able to clear for the lead. And then going to turn number eight, another caution would come out when Chase Briscoe and Austin Hendrick had contact and Chase Briscoe spun out and Joe Logano had nowhere to go and got to the back of Chase Briscoe. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Harrison Burton also got damaged in that wreck. Center just got a little bit loose, made a mistake. It's one of those restarts wrecks that ends up happening. It is what it is. So then during this caution, Chris Bell, Will Brown, Chris Buescher, William Byron, Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Priest, Justin Haley all came down pit row. So then on the restart, a Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside with Ryan Blaney on the outside, and R Tyler Reddick got a fantastic restart and was able to clear for the lead. Ryan Blaney tried everything to catch Tyler Reddick, but it would not be enough, and coming out the final corner, Tyler Reddick would win Sage number one. So then, the top 14 cars all decided to stay out, while drivers like Mark Trek Jr., Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ryan Priest, Neil Hamrick, AJ Allmendinger came down pit road. So then on the restart, you had Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside with Ryan Blaney on the outside, and Tyler Reddick got a fantastic restart and was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, the next lap, Austin Earp went off the racetrack going to turn number two, nearly flipped his car upside down, was able to keep it from going up in the air, got a little damage, was able to continue going. And then on lap number 32, the next cost race came out for Will Brown, who pulled off the track at turn number 11 with a possible engine issue. They were having issues all the weekend, which is a shame because Will Brown was making some pretty big moves in his debut. This would take him out of contention in this race. So then on the next restart, you had Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside and Ryan Blaney on the outside. And Tyler Reddick got a great restart and was able to clear for the race lead. Then we saw more carnage going into turn number eight and nine. Bubba Walsh went off the racetrack, got a little bit wide, and Josh Berry lost control after his come contact with Eric Jones, and Josh Berry decided to go bowling and hit Chris Bell, and a bunch of other drivers got involved. To go to drivers like Austin Dillon, Mark Trick Jr., William Byron had a broken toe link, and Cam Waters were all involved in the incident wreck. I don't know what Josh Perry and Eric Jones were doing right there. I know Clint Boyer tried to blame Bubble Walls for the incident. That was not on Bubble Walls, in my opinion. I really don't know when Clint Boyer was going for right there. So during the caution, Todd Gillen came down pit row while everyone else stayed out. So then on the restart, you had Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside with Ryan Blaney on the outside, and Kyle Larson got a really great restart and jumped up to second, but Tyler Reddick was able to clear it. Meanwhile, another crash would happen when Austin Sindrick, Noah Gregson, and Michael Medell all crashed up in turn number 8A. It seemed like Sindrick and Gregson had nowhere to go, and they got contact from somebody behind, and Michael Medell got caught up in the chain reaction. So then on the next restart, you had Tyler Reddick lead the field from the inside with Kyle Larson on the outside, and Tyler Reddick got a great restart and was able to clear for the race lead. 
Then we saw the guys that had not come down pit road as the run came on. First, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, and Daniel Suarez would come down pit road. Then the next lap, Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain, and Alex Bowman, they came down pit road. And then the next lap, Tyler Reddick came down pit road and handed the lead to Chris Buescher, who was on another strategy. Meanwhile, as Tyler Reddick was coming off of pit road, Kyle Larson had a huge run, and they made contact going into turn number four, and Tyler Reddick locked the brakes up going into turn number four, trying to avoid Kyle Larson hurting his tires. But it wouldn't matter at the end, as coming off the final corner, Chris Buescher would win stage number two. And all the lap cars would then stay out at the end of stage two. So then on the restart, you had Chris Buescher lead the field from the inside with Ryan Priest on the outside. And Chris Buescher got a fantastic restart and was able to clear for the lead. Meanwhile, Mark Trick Jr. got up second and was trying to charge after Chris Buescher. But Ryan Priest, the next lap, was spin from third position in turn number four. Then we saw a few laps later, Brad Kozlowski come down pit road. And then eventually with 43 laps to go, you had the guys on the main strategy at the time, that being Chris Buescher, Mark Trick Jr., Kyle Busch, and Michael Medell, and Joey Logano all came down. Then the next lap, Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, Justin Healy, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, Josh Berry came down pit road. Then the next lap, Daniel Suarez, Ryan Priest, Carson Nosebar came in. Then the next lap, AJ Allmendinger and Ross Chastain came in. And then Ricky Stiles Jr. came down pit road. And they had a few guys that stayed out, including Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Corey Joy, and Ryan Blaney. And then eventually after Larson got about a 20-21 second lead, Kyle Larson would have the race lead and would drop, drop back to 8th position. But Kyle Larson would have fresh tires, and we'll talk about him in a second. But after this, Ryan Blaney, Chase Sully, and Corey Joy, they all eventually came down pit road, handing the lead back to Chris Buescher at the time. So eventually, Kyle Larson started making up a ton of ground, and his car was clearly faster than Mark Trix Jr., who was actually also running down Chris Buescher at the time as well. And Larson started making up half a second, then started making up a second. And with about 18 laps to go, Kyle Larson got back by Kyle Busch and was closing in in a hurry. And then with around 11 or 12 laps to go, Larson had caught up to the top two leaders and was starting to make some inroads in ground. But he got stuck in the dirty air for just a little bit. But everything would change with 11 laps to go when Chris Buescher would miss the corner in turn number 11 and Mark Trickson had the opportunity and chance and took the lead from Chris Buescher as Kyle Larson jumped up to second. Then with about five or six laps to go, Kyle Larson got a great run, made a huge run to the inside, and was able to pass Martin Trex Jr. for the race lead. And then Kyle Larson started pulling away a little bit, but Mark Trex Jr., despite having older tires, was really keeping up with Kyle Larson in this race. But eventually as Truex was gaining, Larson started pulling away. And as it came to the white flag, Kyle Larson started making up, started pulling away. And the reason is us, Mark Trex Jr. was running out of gas. Meanwhile, in turn number five, there was contact between Ross Chastain and Kyle Busch. They both had contact going up into the S's in turn number five. Haven't seen a replay on the incident. Fox did not do a really good job showing a replay in the incident. But Kyle Busch would lose a ton of ground and a ton of positions. Meanwhile, we also come to the end. Kyle Larson would finally come off the corner. And it wouldn't matter at the end as Kyle Larson would come off the corner and pick up a second Cup Series win at Sonoma, his third win of 2024 in his 26th career NASCAR Cup Series victory or something like that. And also, he would, Mark Trix Jr. would run out of gas coming to the checker flag. And Mark Trix Jr. set up finishing second would finish around 30th in this race. Tough break for Mark Trix Jr. there. But let's talk about the guy that won this race, Kyle Larson. I think Kyle Larson probably had the fastest car once Tyler Reddick had his issues. I think early in the race, Tyler Reddick, he had the fastest car. But once Kyle Larson got through traffic as good as he did, because he was the best car through the traffic all day long, I knew he was going to have a really good chance and opportunity to get the victory today. And he was able to close out and get that third win. I think Kyle Larson is going to become very dangerous. And coming into weekend, I picked Kyle Larson win because I knew that five car was going to be super quick today. And he just was able to get it done this afternoon. Congratulations to Kyle Larson on getting win number three of the year. And basically becoming now, I think, the third driver with three wins this season. I think Larson's got a really good chance to win the championship. And that run to the championship starts now for this five team. So now we're going to take a look at the race results. I'll give you my score and thoughts on today's race. So Kyle Larson picks up the victory. Michael McDowell finished the second. Talk about a topsy-turvy day. Got involved in a couple incidents in wrecks and still rebounds to finish in the top two. And he was radio in that his tire was coming apart. But to finish in the top five, great day for Michael McDowell. Obviously leaving to go to Spire next year. Great day for Michael McDowell in second place. 
Chris Buescher finishes third. I thought Buescher was going to win this race because of how bad Dirty Air was, but his car fell back at the end. Still a really good day for Chris Buescher, rebounding after not a great race at Gateway, unfortunately. Still a really solid day for Buescher. He's finished in the top 10 in the majority of these road course races. Great day for him in third place. Chase Elliott finishes fourth. Fantastic run for Chase. He was at points faster than Larson in this race, but didn't have the speed in the end to contend. So, though, a very solid day nonetheless. He finishes fourth. Fantastic run for Chase Elliott, who continues to only have, have a finish no worse than 19th. He finishes in fourth. Ross Chastain finishes fifth. Great day for Ross Chastain. I know he had the issues with Kyle Busch, and I'm not sure if there's many replays of the incident at this point. Still a fantastic day for Ross Chastain inside the top five. Had one of the fastest cars and times was quicker than Kyle Larson, but unfortunately ran out of time. He finishes in fifth. AJ Allmendinger finishes sixth. Really solid day for him. Ran right around 10th most of the day. Play some strategy and gets a really solid top six. Great run for him. Ryan Blaney finished the seventh. Pretty good day for Ryan Blaney, one of his better race on road courses. This definitely is going to help him because he's been having a lot of bad races recently. A really solid recovery day for him. He finished the seventh. Good day for Ryan Blaney. Tyler Reddick finishes eighth. Reddick, in my opinion, had the fastest car before the issues came in. So this is best finish I think he's ever had at Sonoma at this point. He had a good chance to win. He's been good at road courses. Still a solid day, but it could have been better if he'd gotten through traffic a lot better. Chris Abel finishes ninth, the best finishing JGR driver. The JGR car struggled a lot today. He finished ninth. Solid day for Chris Bell. And Todd Gillen finishes 10th. Another good run for this 38 team. I'm telling you that the 38 team is really starting to build a lot of momentum going into the next year. I think he's had five straight top 20 finishes as well. Really solid day for Todd Gillen in 10th place. Corey LaJoy finished 11th. Best run he's had in a while, to be honest. He's been very inconsistent the last five or six weeks. Good to see him finish inside the top 11. Good day for Corey LaJoy in 11th place. Kyle Busch finishes 12th. Man, if he doesn't get turned by Ross Chastain, he's getting a top five. He really needed to turn him around, and he did gain some points on the cutoff line today, but he would have been right up borderline on that cutoff line if he finished where he did. He still does get a top 15, but a disappointing ending to what was a really good race. Going for the 18th, he finished 12th. Could have been better does finish in 12th. Brad Kozlowski finished 13th. He's been slowly starting to get better on these road courses. He's been very inconsistent on road courses the last couple of years. He did play some strategy, but he does get a top 15. Solid day for Brad Kozlowski. Dale Suarez finished 14th. They didn't play the strategy well. They were really good early in the race, but they just didn't play the strategy correctly, and they finished 14th. Tough break for a team that was running well early in the race. He finished in 14th. Alex Bowen finished 15th. Another driver had a top 10 car early. Didn't get a really good end of the strategy. He finishes in 15th. Zane Smith finishes 16th. One of his best all-around runs so far this year. That's now his second straight top 20. Obviously, his future is unknown at this point. Whether he's going to be in the track house family. Runs like this today are going to help for sure. He finishes in 16th. Carson Osbar finished 17th. He had a solid day going. Ran top 10, top 15 a lot of day. And gets a very solid top 20 in 17th. Ryan Priest finishes 18th, Eric Jones finished 19th, and Bubba Walls finished 20th. Expecting more from Bubba today, kind of struggle for the most part. They just didn't have the pace and speed. He does get a top 20, but it definitely could have been better for sure. Joe Logano finished 21st after it looked like he probably had one of the cars to be early. He got stuck in the back, got that damage, but he still was able to get a top 25. Austin Center finished 22nd, struggled all day after winning last week at Gateway. Just not a good day overall. He finished 22nd. Kaz Grawl finished the 23rd. Ricky Stiles Jr. finished 24th. Harrison Byrne once again struggling once again. He finished 25th. Noah Grayson finished 26th. Mark Church, after running out of gas, finished 27th. Tough break for him. He had a really good race going. Was potentially going to have a chance to win the race. He unfortunately finished 27th after fuel miscalculations. Ran out of gas on the last lap and draws back to 27th. That's going to hurt him in the regular season. Dale Hamrick finishes 28th. John Hunter Nemechek finished 29th. William Byer, after breaking the tow link, he finishes in 30th. Will Brown, who made his Cup Series debut, finished 31st. He had Shane Van Gisbergen as a spotter for today. Really tough break to have those engine issues, because I think he had a car that could have been capable of at least getting a top 10 or even winning today, especially at speed that Kyle Busch showed. He unfortunately finished his 31st. I hope Will Brown does come back and run some more races this year. Tough break for him. He finishes in 31st. Josh Berry finished 32nd after crashing out. Justin Neely finished 33rd after engine issues. Chase Briscoe finished 34th. Cam Waters finished 35th. Just not a good day for Cam Waters. I think they had some sort of a lunch issue in this race or had some contact that took him out of contention. On how many races Cam's going to be running the rest of the year. Again, we could see drivers like Haley Dean or someone else getting an opportunity and chance in the future like Matt Benedetto. But Cam Waters finished 35th in his debut. 
Austin Dillon finished 36th after crashing out. Ty Gibbs finished 37th and finishing last in 38th place is Denny Hamlin. So now let's talk about the overall race as a whole. I'll give you my score thoughts on today's race. The first half of this race was absolutely wild. I'll be real and honest. When we usually go to tracks that are repaced, the races are generally not that exciting. I think the first half of this race was absolutely wild and chaotic. I think there were eight cautions in the first half of this race in 55 laps. That is insane. I know it's a road course, but still having that many cautions early was really crazy. Then it kind of got strung out in the second part of the race, and it did get strung out a little bit, but you had a really intriguing battle at the end of the race between Chris Buescher, Mark Trex Jr., and there was a good battle for a few laps there, and then Kyle Larson battling Mark Trex Jr. at the end. I thought that was intriguing and exciting. I think for a race that was a repave, it was a better race than I expected it to be. It wasn't amazing by any stretch of imagination, but for a road course race in the next gen era, it was not that bad. I'm going to give today's NASCAR Cup Series race at Sonoma. I'm going to give this race overall probably 6.5 to 7 out of 10. Like I said, it had some good moments for sure. It was one of the better repave races I've seen in the last couple years. It was very chaotic. I'm going to give this race a 7 out of 10. So, that is giving today's NASCAR Cup Series race review from Sonoma Raceway. One thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notifications on so if I win a video, that's go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as for my patron as well. Let's go to the below of that and comment your thoughts below on today's race. Your thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And congratulate Kyle Larson on picking up the victory. Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have a NASCAR news be discussing news over the course of the last couple days. We're also going to have some other content dropping throughout the week as we get you set up and prepared for Iowa Speedway. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.